Welcome back. Well, since I'm on the subject of power supplies, there's a project that I've been meaning to tackle, and I figured since I'm talking about these things and I have the camera already set up, this would be a good moment to get into it. Now, looking at my desk here, you can see I have a couple things set up. I mean, obviously I have my whole little organizer system set up and my power supply that I built. This is my bench top adjustable unit that I put together which I've featured in other videos. But now that I have this sitting here and it's in perfect working order, I can go ahead and tackle the project at hand, which is converting this other power supply here. Now this particular unit has been running on this desk constantly for probably a year and a half, two years at least. Um, this is actually the power supply that powers up my router and my network switch instead of having two separate power supplies. And it also powers my Arduino, you can see running up here, which is what this cord is. I also can use it to charge up, you know, my cell phone or, you know, pretty much power up any project that I'm working on. And I've used that one here for a while. And then I built this one to be an actual desktop unit because you can kind of see the difference between the two here. Whereas this one has the terminals in the front, that one has them on the top. Um, this one has the LED you know, readouts for each rail. And I have the negative 12 volt brought out on this, whereas the other one I didn't. And I have this, um, adjustable power supply tied into it as well that I can use with its own set of outputs and this one's actually been modified quite a few times already um, I you know started with this a couple summers ago now that I could think about it where it was just a concept I had the power supply kind of rough together which was basically the same as one of these and just you know put it together bit by bit added things here and there. This was the kind of afterthought thing. Um, originally it was just tied into the 12 volt rail with the wire that kind of ran from the, from the front and now that's actually ran to the back with its own set of terminals on the side which it didn't have before. And uh, it's pretty much done. I'm not gonna really do much more to it now at this point. It just sits in this little holder here, it's perfect. Now between the two, this is actually a little more po uh, powerful the unit than this one is. Not that I need all that power, I mean, 22 amps on the 5 volt rail, 14 amps on the 3.3 rail, and 10 amps on the 12 volt rail is fine enough for me. I really don't need more than that. But the other supply here, like I said, is kind of dedicated to running the LED lights that you see here, my little sign in the corner. And behind the monitor, the off to the side of the camera here, is the networking stuff hooked up to the wall. So I kind of wanted to have a dedicated system just for that, like I mentioned. But one of the problems is, is when I go fiddling around with some of these connectors, sometimes I end up shutting down my internet. And to combat that, I have a terminal strip here. And what I'm going to do is mount this to it and the more permanently attached stuff will be hooked directly to that. And then I could use the you know banana jacks as I need for other projects. Part of my thought process was originally was to take the guts out of this and put it in here so I can have a more powerful unit. But I'm gonna forego that simply because if you go back to the video of where I did some of the work on this, I actually desoldered the wiring inside and replaced it with heavier gauge cable. So the wires going to these terminals is a lot heavier than what I have in there. And I just decided, you know, it's, that was a lot of work. And while I can still do that, this thing's been so heavily modified for this particular use, I'm pretty much just going to leave it at that point. But that being said, now that this is running, I can go ahead and take this guy apart and change it up and then use this supply to power my internet in the meantime so I don't have any downtime here in case this doesn't go the way I'd like it to. So with that, I have to go ahead and kill the power to this, which if I shut that off, that just kills the main 
part of it but you could see this is still running because this is on the AC side of things so I'm just going to start disconnecting this stuff and pull these guys off of here and there's actually another power switch in the back that I'll shut off and you'll see this orange light will go out now I'm not going to open this up till that orange light goes out because there are some pretty large capacitors in there and I don't want to zap myself going inside this thing which is very possible um, go ahead and remove the power cord and uh, we'll take this two wires off the top. Now these just go out to the stuff on the wall. I'm just gonna let that fall behind my counter for now. And we could take a look at this. Now there's a, a, you know, a dozen videos at least that I could think of that feature how to make these. I know I've done a few of them myself. Um, if you have any old computers lying around or you come across these old power supplies, this is a very handy thing to have, especially in an electronics lab like this. Sorry, get everything in frame, that's a little better. I'm kind of sitting on the side of the camera that doesn't have the screen on it, so unfortunately I can't really see what's on the viewfinder right now, but I kind of have an idea. Anyway, you can see by the dust buildup that this thing's been running for quite a while. And uh, it's a very simple design. I mean, I got a couple rubber feet in the bottom just to keep them sliding around the desk. Power goes in here, switch enables the power. When you turn the switch on, the orange AC light in indicator will light. That will also enable the USB output here, which is a uh, two amp output. Not quite enough to charge my tablet, it needs 2.1 amps, and you don't get exactly what this is rated out of, out of it, so I don't use it to charge my tablet, unfortunately, but it works great for my cell phone. And then I have the 12, five, and 3.3 outputs. Now this is a, 400 watt power supply and you can see the different ratings on it 28 amps at the 3.3 30 amps at 5 volt 25 amps at 12 volt so quite a bit more powerful than my you know benchtop supply that I put together and uh, it's perfect for what I use it for a little bit overkill in fact you know what now that I'm looking at this thing, I think we're going to go a different route. I'm deciding this right now live in this video. We're going to go a different route. Instead of worrying about taking that thing apart and undoing it, which I'm still going to show you the inside of it. And instead of trying to upgrade this power supply here, what I'm going to do is way off over here, you could see I have a shelving unit that's got all sorts of computer parts and little trinkets and things to work on and one of those is a box of power supplies that I pulled from computers that I've recycled. So I think I'm going to go ahead and open up the box and see what's in there because after all 400 watts is a little bit much just to be running a router and a you know data switch in my opinion and I don't really need all that power right now. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab one out of there. We'll hook up the internet right now to this power supply that's running so I can get back up online here. And the power supply here, we'll go ahead and open up and I'll show you what I did on the inside of it. And we'll take it from there. All right. As you can see, I have a plethora of power supplies here, kind of inundated with these things. So the original one, like I mentioned, was a 400 water. We have this streamline one, which is actually pretty interesting. I might end up using this. We have to take a look inside and see what she looks like. But this is, oh, I should mention, these are all Dell power supplies, whereas this one was an extreme brand, which is probably just a no-name brand. But this is a 205, or I'm sorry, 250 watt power supply, which has uh, 15 amp on the 5 volt, 7 amp on the 3.3 volt, 17.8 amps on 12 volt. Uh, the standby voltage is 4 amps, so this actually might be good for powering up my tablet. Uh, the negative 12 volt rail is a half an amp, which I don't really use the negative voltages too much it's there. 
This one is quite heavy. This one's rated at 305 watts, so this is a little more powerful than I'm looking to go with. Um, but this one here has a 5 volt, 22 amp, a negative 12 volt, 1 amp, a 3.3 volt, 17 amp, a uh, 12 volt, well, I'm sorry, this one actually has quite a few different outputs it looks like. Yeah, it's interesting. This one's an interesting unit because it has um, a few different you know, readings on it that the other ones didn't. And it's heavy and well, I'm probably not going to use this one. Also, I don't know if you can mention, uh, notice it or not, but the color scheme on this one's a little different than the other ones are. So this one's going to go back in the bin. I'm not going to even take a look at that one because it's just confusing. And then we have a 230 watt unit. So it's going to be a toss up between these two based upon what the insides look like and what, how easy they are to work on will be one of the two of them. The other guy here we're going to save as a spare. We're going to use this one for powering up, you know, projects that are a little bit more powerful than what my bench top supply can handle. And I'm thinking things like uh, a car stereo, for example, 25 amps at the 12 volt rail will definitely power a nice car stereo system or a car amplifier or something like that. So we're gonna use that one pretty much for that. And since it's already a completed unit, I'm just gonna leave it as is. I will still show you the inside of it. In fact, let me do that now. I'll get these guys out of the way. And we're gonna go ahead and open this up. Now, like I said, mentioned before, I did let the electricity drain out of this thing so I don't get any nasty kind of shocks. And of course, if you're not comfortable working on this kind of stuff, I don't suggest doing so because you don't want to get yourself a nasty little shock either. But let me spare the uh, boring screw removal part and I'll be right with you. This would be a great time to go ahead and clean this thing out because like I said, from running so long, you can see the amount of just general dust and stuff that's been caked up in here. Um, but this is all she wrote. I mean, all I basically did was connected all the colors together. So all the yellows, all the oranges, the reds, the blacks, so on and so forth. They're all just kind of connected together. Ugh. And they're um, connected to terminals here. And you can see this, wow, this large pile of stuff here is the, uh, wow, what did I do here? This has been a while since I looked at this. It looks like when I put the LED indicators in, I connected the USB output directly to those leads. So that's what this is. And just all heat shrink together. And when I do these, I also heat shrink the AC connections, make sure they're isolated. And this particular unit, when I built this, I was originally putting in these um, resistors. This is basically just a power resistor with a heat sink from a computer just cut off and uh, attached to it. And this was just to get the voltage up. You know, you do have to have some kind of a load on these things to get the proper voltage. But I've found that the newer supplies I've been working on don't need those, so I haven't been adding them. In fact, the benchtop supply doesn't have one in it and it works just fine. But I'm, I'm not gonna close this back up right now because I wanna go ahead and take this outside. It's uh, quite cold out today. It's, in fact, it's one of the coldest dates we've had here in New York. And uh, I haven't gone outside today because of it. And that's why I'm sitting here shooting these videos. So I'll, this will be you know, taken outside at some point and blown out. I, I will point out that this blue line here is the 12 volt, the negative 12 volt rail. And the white one here is the negative five volt rail. This is actually one of the only supplies I have that has the five, the negative five volt rail. Now I just left the wires bundled up in here with some heat shrink on because I didn't need them at the time, but I didn't want to eliminate them just in case I wanted to add them one day. So that might be something I might bring out to the front. But other than that, I mean, I've done videos on these before. So this particular unit right here isn't going to be any more in depth of a look. Just show you what the inside of one of these that's been running for a long time looks like and uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and sit this mess to the side and we'll clean that up later
but I do want to take a look at these other supplies and for that I got to go grab the power cable because I want to be able to test these things out and I'll show you a method that I came up with doing that. Now the particular unit we're going to look at is going to be the smaller one here the 250 water and I'm going to use this one because it's the smallest out of them all and I've never really done one of the smaller ones so it's going to be kind of a, a little bit of a challenging build too and I can get the terminal strip mounted pretty well in this. I mean, I'm not sure where I'm going to put it. It depends on how the inside of this thing is going to look. Um, but I will show you how to test this. Now, it is interesting to note this is a newer supply. So we have the motherboard connector, which is the larger pin, and then the smaller pin is for the CPU power. And then there's only three peripheral pins, and this is going to be for your hard drive, your IDE, you know, I'm sorry, your... Uh, optical drive and whatnot and you can see it's got the newer SATA connections on it which provides the three voltages that this outputs to one of the pins and uh, we're going to go ahead and use this one if it works now testing this out is a matter of just plugging it in and you can hear that little snap that was the capacitors charging up in there now the green indicator light, which is nice that Surti has this in here, isn't working. But this one does actually have this little button that you can hold in and test it out. And I could feel the fan powering up and the light lights, obviously. But just to test this out, I'm going to take my multimeter here. And we're going to set this up. Turn it on to volts DC and using the motherboard connector I'm going to jam this in here now the black and this is your ground so I'm just going to jam this into one of the black connectors I might not be able to do this uh, two-handed but we'll see the yellow wire is 12 volt the red wire is 5 volt and the orange wire is 3.3 so if I put this in any of those connectors I should go ahead and see the power output now the other thing I can do to test this out is take this green wire and connect it to the black wire here and short the two of them out and that will turn this on in fact if I take a pair of needle nose pliers here and stick them in here that light will light as you can see and we'll get some we'll get something off this now let's see if I go ahead and uh, get a ground here. In fact, I could just ground this out against here. There's 5 volts. There's 3.3 volt. And I can I can use this connector over here for the 12 volt. Which we'll do like this. Careful not to short ourselves out. And it's 11.91 volts. Close enough for me. So I'll turn that off. We'll disconnect that. And we'll also go ahead and take this out. Now I'll show you how much juice is in here. As you can see, the mains is disconnected. If I push this in, the fan, the light didn't light, but the fan actually spun up for a second. And that's an indicator that there was still AC charged up on those capacitors in there. And they're pretty much you know, dissipated now at this point. So now we're going to go ahead and open this guy up. Once again, I'll save you the boredom of watching me do this. It's just a matter of undoing the screws. There are, you know, a few of them around the side here in the top and bottom. And it looks like the fan also has its own set of screws. So I'm just going to go ahead and undo all those screws and I'll be right there. All right, that was uh, fairly easy. I didn't actually need to take the fan screws off because that kind of sits to the side here. Now, I did notice they had this little loop sticking out with the wires here. This is just excess wire for the fan, which for some reason they decided to bring out of the case. Um, not necessary, but they did. And uh, kind of like the orientation, the way they did this. You know, I'm used to seeing um, a wider power supply where everything's kind of shoved to one end of it. But the way they oriented this, it's kind of nice. You know, you can see it's got, you know, these large inductors in here and the uh, main transformer. Now, this isn't going to be a theory on how these things work. Again, there are far other better videos. There's other YouTubers out there that can describe these things better than I can. Um, I'll try to find one and put it down in the description or link it someplace here in the video. 
but I would recommend uh, checking one of those out if you want to know how these things work. But otherwise, we'll go ahead into some detail here of what I'm going to do to it. Now, you can see there's these little zip ties all along here. I'm actually going to use my cutters and I'm going to cut all them off the whole way through just to get them out the way and this will allow us to play with these wires a little better and also since this fans on a connector on the side of the board over here we're going to go ahead and disconnect that just gently pull that up take that and put that out the way that's a nice feature to have that on there like that instead of being soldered to the board. I will say this is actually put together really nicely compared to some of the cheaper supplies I've worked on. I believe the one that's in my bench supply over here is also a Dell power supply. And uh, we're going to see how we're going to tackle this. Now I can go ahead and take the whole circuit board out. But the drawback to doing that is you can see that this power connector is mounted from the outside and then they solder the wires on here from the inside. So the only way to really undo that would be to un either unsolder up here, which may be a little hard to get at because they put these, you know, um, moths and this capacitor up here to kind of clean up the signal a little bit and whatnot. So it might be harder to do that than it would be to disconnect it from the board here. Um, I have to say, this is put together really nicely. They even did things like these large resistors that are over here. They went ahead and heat shrinked the lead that goes back down to the board to keep it from shorting out, which I quite like. And this thing is from an office computer that the motherboard died on. And the computer wasn't terribly old, but it did run all the time. And that being said, it's really clean inside, so I'm, I'm happy for that too. But the premise of this whole thing is now is to go ahead and modify this. Now, if you remember anything about any of the other videos that I've done this with, I mentioned cutting these wires. I'm going to refrain from doing that for right now because I might just go ahead and replace these wires with um, a different gauge. We'll have to see how this actually works out. And uh, this is probably just going to get mounted under my desk here, and I'm going to run the wires from my router and stuff down to it. And this will be more permanently installed, and my little... LED system that I have over here is going to get slightly modified. So I might leave these wires long. I haven't quite figured it out. Like this particular one is nice and long. So I might just leave that like that and just use this as like a brick power supply, which is pretty perfect. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and remove the looks like four screws that are holding this in. And those big capacitors that I told you about, this one looks like it only has one, which is this giant guy right here. I mean, there are other capacitors on here, but that's the main one. And uh, I'll be right with you. Check this thing out, boys and girls. This is quite a unique little power supply here. I am quite happy with this one. Um, that little button and LED arrangement on the back is pretty unique. I haven't come across those yet. And there's a little circuit board involved in doing that. But that circuit board has this lead that comes off of it. And judging by the color codes, the power good um, and the power on circuit and a ground all go out to that. So this is actually a handy little harness to have on these things, especially if you're modifying these things. Also, look at the back of this thing. Wowzers. This has by far got the most amount of circuitry. I mean, the most amount of components on it out of all these things that I've taken apart. I mean, granted, you don't get to see the bottom side of the board unless you actually take it out. But... Wow, there's a lot of stuff on this. Quite happy with that. There's a good separation between the tracks on the AC side. And you can see this wide track right here. There's actually some holes carved in it. Um, looks like there's some opto isolators on here, a few of those. And again, I'm not gonna get into into how these are built. There's other people who can like explain them way better than I can. But this is the circuit board for that LED light and the push button and there's quite a bit of stuff on that even for there now I do have the soldering iron heating up over here in the corner and I'm gonna go ahead and desolder the hot and neutral wires from here just so I can get the rest of this case out the way and then we're gonna go ahead and start modifying this 
Here's a little close up of that board with the LED light and the test button on it. And this thing is quite complicated. There's more on there than I thought there would be, as you can see. A bunch of resistors and other components. Looks like a couple of uh, transistors on here. Definitely a lot more complicated than it may need to be, or you know, maybe this is what drives the voltages up to their proper voltage. Not sure. Not 100% sure. So I'm not going to eliminate this, obviously, because it's still going to be a functional part. Um, you will notice that there's no AC switch on this unit like the other one I had did and my bench top supply has on it. And um, I'm going to keep it that way. This is pretty much um, going to be on all the time anyway. So there really isn't any need to put any kind of power switches in here. But you can see here I went ahead and desoldered this. It was pretty easy. So we'll put that off to the side with the rest of the case. We'll put this to the side because we won't need it. And just taking a look at this a little more, this, like I said, is very well put together. I like how they have all the components kind of individually heat sleeved off here. You can uh, see like the power good, the standby rails, like all those different pieces here are kind of just heat shrunk together so you, you know where they belong. And some of those leads, like for example, the power on lead goes all the way out to this connector and then it goes back out to the main motherboard connector. So that's definitely an integral part of the system. And we're gonna you know, keep that incorporated into the design because it most likely won't work without it and I don't wanna do that. Now the two longest leads here are these guys. So we're definitely gonna keep them on here as well. And the rest of these are most likely going to trim, but I'm still debating whether or not I want to go ahead and desolder those and replace them with larger wires. You can see the pads on the back here. These big pads are what all those wires go to. And what they basically do, is like you can see on the AC connector, is they actually have these little snap connectors that they crimp onto the wires and then they punch these into the hole and then solder them from the other side. And that keeps all the wires nice and together. So these large groups of wires have those on there like that. And the last power supply I did this to had the same kind of setup, which is nice, it works well. But we definitely don't need all these connectors on here. So I'm definitely gonna go ahead and eliminate those. Um, we do need to put a power switch on here since the button is only like a standby button. Um, I, I probably can replace the button on here with an actual on off button, the one that latches. But you know, again, that's a little bit beyond my scope of knowledge. I don't believe it's just a matter of desoldering this. It's going to be a little bit more involved than in that. I mean, maybe I could jump the two pins and just short it out, but I, I like having a switch. Plus I have them in my tool set here. So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and use them. Um, the only thing about this is once they bring these wires outside the case, they kind of just get bundled up and then once they put the connectors on the end of it, it makes it a little harder to, you know, work on those. So what I'll need to do is, is take the connectors off of this if I'm going to keep these wires. I still have to decide that. This main one here definitely has to be snipped off or at least um, this blue one, the purple one, the gray one, the green one. And one of these orange wires is the sense wire, probably this one here. They can get snipped off and left like that. Whereas the other ones might get just desoldered from the board. I haven't quite this decided that yet. Um, I, I do have plenty of wire. In fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring you up here and show you my spools that I kind of hanging up here. This is just a piece of pipe just suspended from the bookshelf up here and I have uh, you know different gauges of wire up here that I use for different projects so I might use them I have to kind of put some more thought into this before I go any further because once I start going I'm not going to stop and I, I, I again I do like the way this was put together but ultimately it does have to be modified for my usage so let me do some more thinking and I'll be right with you
Oh, the plot has thickened, as they say. Most of these power supplies I've worked on has had a 3.3 volt sense wire, which basically just gets connected to one of the 3.3 volt rails directly at the motherboard connector, which, as you can see, I've cut away. But this one also has a, a 5 volt sense connection too, which is pretty interesting. It's the first time I've encountered that one. Um, and I actually went ahead and snipped all the, um, I guess you can control, call them control wires. Power supply on, power good, you know, the standby voltage. Like I've disconnected all those from the main connector basically and just kind of ran them off to the side over here, which leaves you with just the actual power rails. Again, orange being 3.3, red being 5 volt, yellow being 12 volt, and black being ground. And you can see there are quite a bit of these wires jammed into this board here. You know, each of these connectors has their own setup. So you need, you know, a wire for each of those to go back. But they all are on the same physical rail on the board here. So I think desoldering these would be a smart way to go. Because I'm just going to end up doubling them up anyway. So why not just replace them with a heavier gauge wire? That seems like it's a more feasible idea. And then I'll be able to put a ring terminal on it and connect it to this block, which will sit external to the power supply. And then I can kind of run the wire to whatever length I want. So now I'm gonna go through the process of using my giant solder sucker tool here and individually undoing all these pads. And luckily those pads are marked on the other side of what they belong to. Again, a, a well-designed power supply will have those features. So again, I'll cut the video here, save you the process of watching me desolder all these, and uh, we'll take it back from there once I get it done. So these wires will all be disconnected from the board once that's ready. And that's basically the power supply without all the connectors on it. I kind of have them just pile up here in the background. You can see we could still use all that wire for something else, but enough about that. Um, you can see the large holes that are left over. That's what we're going to use for the new wiring we're going to put in. And I mentioned this barrier strip earlier. Now what I'm going to try to do with this is, is use a couple of these for the ground and a couple of these for the positive. And I'm going to try to alternate it. So we'll do maybe two 12 volt rails, a ground, two 5 volt rails, a ground, and then maybe the 3.3 rails, or we'll put a couple grounds. Haven't quite figured out exactly how I'm gonna do that part yet. But I do wanna try to get this, so this is gonna mount back in the case and I'll have a, a set of long wires coming out of it and that'll go off to the strip someplace mounted under my desk here and this will also get mounted up underneath the desk and that way it can just stay on out of sight. Well, it seems I'll never cease to amaze myself with the uh, project going the way it's been going here, I've not looked at the camera for a while and it turns out my memory card ran out of space on it. Yeah. So I went ahead and cleaned that off and had some dinner and kind of looked at the footage a little bit and realized where the project was going that way. And kind of just want to sum it all up now at this point because it's been long enough of a video, honestly. But at any rate, what I did was is I made up a bunch of these leads. Now you can see, I went ahead and put the eyelets on, crimped them on, soldered them on, put heat shrink on the ends, and also got the other ends ready. And these are gonna serve as the ground cables, these big, thick, nice cables. And I did the same thing with some red wire here for the positive. Now, admittedly, the positive wires aren't as thick as a, of a gauge as the negative wires, but I'm working with what wiring I have here. So it's not such a big deal and this is gonna carry way more current than the project's gonna put out here, the power supply's gonna put out, I'll say. Um, what I did have to do though is, is put the sense wires onto two of these so they're ready to go. And that's just gonna you know, give feedback back to the power supply. I also bundled up and put some heat shrink onto the 12, uh, negative 12 volt rail because I'm not gonna use it. That's gonna stay tucked in here. And then the last three wires that I have 
is the power on off switch and the standby and power good switches and my intention is to bring the two of these out to the barrier strip and I'm going to leave the power on cable in the case and I'm going to drill a hole and mount the switch back here and the other wires are going to come out to this and this is all set up to go where I just have to put these onto the terminal here but first I have to solder them all in and the only other wire I have to worry about is this one black wire here which is going to serve as the ground cable for the you know return wire on the little circuit board here and that's just going to get shoved into one of the holes of this so I'm going to turn my soldering iron on get that going flip the board over solder them in and I'm going to come back to you here's a quick shot of what the wires look like before they're actually soldered in the place once they're soldered in they're going to be trimmed down to the board to keep them from sticking out too far here's what they look like soldered in place next step is just to cut them up well you can see here I got them all soldered in I did leave two holes open the only thing I have left to do now is put this back in the case and uh, put a switch at the end of it and then run a wire from the switch to one of the ground cables here so it could turn on and uh, we're going to leave the other two wires here just connected to the strip one of these will be for the um, constant on power source which will be the 5 volt rail and the other one will be like a power indicator kind of thing but uh, I figured well, I'll leave those outside of the case so then that way I can you know work with them a little bit more I kept going back and forth about drilling a, a, a hole in here and putting the switch in it but I think I want to leave the switch further out so I can like I said put this under the desk and just have the switch up the top the top side of it so I'm gonna go ahead and mount this back into the case and also resolder the power cables back into here so I can go ahead and test this thing out all right got everything mounted last thing to do is get the power switch put onto the end of this wire and a ground wire to one of the terminals here and maybe a zip tie or two on this bundle just to keep it neat but that's pretty much all she's gonna write and uh, the case put together and here comes the moment of truth I have the case all put together zip ties on the wires power switch hooked up I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the power cable into the back here and hopefully the thing doesn't go bang horrifically all right, there's a little snap of the uh, capacitors charging up and I'm gonna hold that button in for a second fan still comes up power light still lights up that's a good sign I'm gonna let that button go it went back off again and now we're gonna try the power switch which of course that works and now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take the meter here and hook it up to the system here and see what kind of voltages we get off of these just to make sure everything is copacetic put that in the range and we should have 12 volt 5 volt 3.3 volt then this is going to be a 5 volt rail and then this is going to be another 5 volt rail and if I shut this power supply off all these should be dead. We're not going to get anything off of them. With the exception of this one here, which is our standby voltage. And then the last one should be also off. So at the standby voltage, if I want to put an LED indicator on, I can put one on here, and that's going to indicate that this thing's receiving AC power. And this is also the power tap that I can use for a USB connection if I want to power up a, you know, want to charge a device or something like that so I might go ahead and do that but for now that's gonna do it for this video um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this supply into place mount this battery strip to either the underside or top side of my desk haven't quite figured all that out yet um, but just wanted to make sure this power supply is indeed working and if anything else maybe I'll put some rubber feet or something on the bottom if it sits on top if it sits underneath I'm gonna you know attach it to the bottom of the desk or something like that so with that I want to thank you for watching I know this video has been quite long but you know when you're doing these kind of modifications there is a lot involved in it and um, 
a lot of it you know sounded like it was uncertainty but it was more of the fact that I have to kind of figure this out as I go you know it's um, every time you do one of these it may be a little different inside and then ultimately what, how you're gonna have the end product um, looking like it's that's gonna be a, a difference too so with this particular one figuring out if I wanted to use the bigger wires or you know how I'm gonna actually terminate at the end was the main drawback now I will say before I go that once you do this this particular way this can be used any way you want so right now if I actually wanted to build a benchtop power supply with this thing I can just go ahead and mount this inside of a box and you know make a front panel and just connect this strip right to the front panel so out of all the ones I've done this is definitely the most efficient one so far so with that, I want to thank you for watching. If you're not a subscriber already, I'd really appreciate it if you do that. I'm trying to get to a goal of 100 subscribers by the end of the year, which, you know, I'm already past 30. So that's a good point to be at. And, uh, you know, for thank you for sticking around so far. It's uh, a great support. And, well, thanks for watching.